for joining us. We are in the third video talking about documented information. This is part two of last week's series for a three part. Anyway, we're moving on. Do you know how many times we had to do this one because he couldn't get the number straight? <laughs> so, uh, picking up where we left off last week, we made a pretty bold claim. That's right. We said that in the new standard, there's almost no requirements to document anything. Which is pretty... Well, almost anything. Oh, it's pretty wild to think about. But So today we want to take a look at where we're getting that from. Yeah. And I, I really like this clause because he's going to do most of the work here. So, <laughs> Because what we really need to do in order to understand what we've been talking about, we need to actually examine the standard 7.5 in the document information. And uh, let's put it up on the screen and go for it. Here we go. All right. So 7.5 is document information. And under 5.1 general, we see the organization's quality management system shall include A, documented information, required by this standard, C3.1. Yeah, and, and the key here is what it's talking about on C3.11 and Annex 8.6. We're gonna look at that as a key, po key thing there. B, documented information determined by the organization as being necessary for the effectiveness of the quality management system. Note, the extent of documented information for a quality management system can differ from one organization to another due to A, the size of the organization and its type of activities, processes, products, and services, B, the complexity of processes and their interactions, and C, the competence of persons. Yeah, and you'll notice that's not a whole lot different from the other, from the original standard, this standard, um, except of course it's not mandating any documentation be done, but in order to get the full impact of what these changes are, as I kind of alluded to, we need to look at Annex 8.6, which is contained in this standard. So Okay, so A.6 documented information says, as part of the alignment with other management system standards, <clears throat> a common clause on documented information has been adopted without significant change or addition, C7.5, we just did. Where appropriate, text elsewhere in this international standard has been aligned with its requirements. Consequently, the terms documented procedure and record have both been replaced throughout the requirements text by documented information. Where ISO 9001-2008 would have referred to documented procedures, example, to define, control, or support a process, this is now expressed as a requirement to maintain documented information. Where ISO 9001-2008 would have referred to records, this is now expressed as a requirement to retain documented information. So are you starting to get it? It's no wonder that the upper level standards actually considered walking away from this, this revision. You won't find the words documented procedure or records in this version. No, you won't. And it's a head scratcher. So, <laughs> well, what's the key to breaking the code to this? Well, what when it says maintaining documented information, that's that's a code word for procedure. So, but when it says retaining documented information, that's a record. Um, it's a bit strange, and you have to understand the code to be able to understand what it's really saying. So if you go through this standard and looking for words, procedure, and records, you're not going to find it. But even then, if you go through and you're looking for, you know, documented information, um, it's, it's a still a head scratcher. Yeah, it? it's true. And they're, they're not exactly prescribing what exactly the documentation should look like. That's right. They're, they're describing what should be done, not how to do it. So your, so your documented info could be what we're calling procedures, but it could also be flowcharts, turtles, videos, diagrams, pictures, cave writings. <laughs> Maybe not cave writings. Maybe not cave writings. <laughs> well, <clears throat> do you think that their real intention was to eliminate the use of what we call procedures? Well. At first glance, it appears that way. The, when when I went first started, we've been working with this thing for a year. When I first started going through it, I thought they're crazy, but but I'm convinced now they're they're not trying to do away with documented information altogether. Yeah, seems like they're trying to get folks 
to focus on an effective system that delivers quality product on time, in budget, um, not just uh, on focusing on documentation as we discussed. Yep. And you, you remember the remember the process approach. You know, it's it's been beefed up as as the quality objectives have been beefing up. So again, if you a couple I forget how many numbers back it's now we're talking about more they're trying to I think they're trying to get folks to stop fussing with documentation and focusing on effectiveness. And so you've seen that evolution along the way and they're not saying you don't need to have documented information. Right. Procedures, whatever cave writings, whatever they are, but they're saying you need to be focusing on having whatever it takes to, to be effective. And it makes sense. The earliest versions of the 2015 uh, ISO standard, um, one of their objectives was to bring credibility back to uh, that management system. Right. So they're really trying to eliminate the cement life preserver syndrome, if you could call that. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say what they did was smart, uh, but uh, you know, albeit an obfuscated move. Yes. For if you if you got a thesaurus, obfuscating never. Anyway, <laughs> anyway the, the the motivation goal was I think was right on what they were trying to achieve. How they did it was, I'll let you be the judge of that whether it was silly or not. But um, <laughs> as we're gonna as we go through the rest of the standard and look at it, I mean, so we we felt we, we wanted to set this ground rule. So when we go through and you see documented information, what they're talking about, or retained information, you know what they're talking about there. Especially because there has historical, historically been such a focus on, on you know, records and, 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 you know, procedures and so forth. Right. So, all right, well, in just a second, we are going to jump into some viewer feedback, and uh, then we're going to talk about where we're going. Learn all about AS9100 RevD with our new online course. This is the best resource to rapidly get you caught up on what's changed and what's new. Our course guides you through each part of the standard and teaches you how to implement it within your own organization. Each section is broken into bite-sized pieces, allowing you to work through the standard at your own pace. You can access the course as many times as you want, making this the number one resource for when you need a quick refresh on a specific topic. Buy it today and get the guidance you need to achieve your RevD certification. Well, what we wanted to do was, as I thought what we m might do with some of the ongoing episodes is, is talk about your feedback to us and your questions, which we've been trying to get you to be part of, because as we go through this, we're all learning. And uh, we haven't implemented a whole lot more Rev D than you have. So we're gonna learn this as we go through it, although we've been working on this some time. So we're interested in your questions and your feedback. And we did get a an email in from Scott from Ross Nameplate, which I thought I would share with you. He said, thank you guys. I've been watching your videos and trying to get prepared for the changes. You guys rock. Keep them coming. <laughs> thank you, Scott. We appreciate that. Are you, Sure, he wasn't talking about this side of the camera. Or he may have been. <laughs> what we what we really want to do, though, is Scott. Thanks for writing into us, Absolutely. And, and and the others that we're going to share on some other videos, some of the other things that you're writing in. But 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 please respond to to us and let us know what we need to cover. Yeah. What do you want to hear? What, and, what and what what you've learned going through this? I mean, hopefully you're working on this stuff and. Um, what tricks have you learned? What issues have you come across that we can share this together? This is sort of like a, this is sort of like a, a video Elsmar if you want to do it. So <laughs> there you go. We do have a number of subjects in the pipeline uh, for our, you know, episodes. Yeah, we're not going we're, away anytime in the near future. There's so. a lot to cover. But uh, having said that, with so much to cover, we want to get to what you want to hear about. So uh, what do you want to hear about? We invite your your comments to us. Email us. Let us know what you want to see next and we'll make sure we bump that up into the chain before we, I we come up with more ways to contact us. Or? No, we no. definitely don't need that. <laughs> anyway, thank you uh, again for tuning in. Thank you for your feedback. And uh, you can hit us up on our website. You can email us uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. And until then, we will see you next time.